write them in and you would see people that were really conversing with the writers get some shit done including amanda bond she was really tight with dan schneider um mm. you know and um you know speaking she ended, up getting, amanda, the, she ended of, up getting the amanda show and you know the rest yeah, of history so. speaking of her um she was discovered they said i think i saw when i was watching those documentaries which we're going to talk about in a second like, let me stop uh, laughing. <laughs> she was discovered at like workshops they used to have at the Laugh Factory for kids. So I didn't even know they had that yeah, shit. I didn't either. I did they, some, yeah. They, you had some? Wait a minute. So they was like they at the Laugh Factory for kids, like comedy acts? Yeah, she was she was a comedy act, yeah. She was definitely oh, wow. like the height of kids entertainment. Not, like the Nickelodeon days, like from there, because I ain't never heard of no I, shit like one that. One time like, I went to the Chateau of Comedy and you know, cause I was trying to do like, you know, some Whatever. <laughs> and they were all fucking kids. Wait a minute, please tell me you didn't do any stand up. I, I was trying to. They said and that. You need that footage. No, no, because it, it said it was the open mic night, but then there were a bunch of kids. I'm like, this fucking kid's taking away my shine. <laughs> God, so you, you did some at the Laugh Factory. Well, I, did, so. I think I did the gong show at the Laugh, Laugh Factory. So I went up there and did like a little set. I didn't get gonged. I don't know if you guys remember that shit. That shit's old as hell. But, <laughs> Um, but you could go up there and do anything. So I did that in the Laugh Factory as a kid, and I messed around with stand up a little bit. But Amanda, she was a beast, though. I don't know. You seen some of the footage in the yeah. doc, and uh, yeah, that's how she got discovered. Was just basically doing sets, you know. Um, stand up at like eight. Yeah, she was like nine. That's awesome. Eight, yeah, maybe eight. Yeah, because I think she got on the show. She was like nine, ten. So she was doing that at eight, and she was like, you know, and you know, to her credit. She was incredible on the show as well. Like, she did Ask Ashley, which was basically like a three-minute monologue. Just her talking to the camera, reading letters, and just going off, blowing up about the stupid shit that they would ask her. Uh, you know, with me and my single, my signature character, I had a puppet that I would play off. So it was a little bit different. We would go back and forth, and there were some things involved, some physical comedy. But she was just her, a camera, going at it for three, four minutes. So what she did on, on stage... She took right to the show, and she's she's un, she's almost unmatched as a nine year old. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's she crazy. Was crazy. The footage I saw, like, I never, I only heard, like, I never watched that much Nickelodeon. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. or none of that shit, or whatever. And when I saw her doing her shit on this documentary, I was, I was like, God damn, she's like super good and confident, and like crazy delivery, crazy timing, crazy like everything. When she's like. Eight, ten, wow, and then they give her her own show and all that kind of shit. But you were you were close to her age, right? Like, yeah, so, you, so we were basically were like two of the youngest on the show. Yeah, so we were like best friends on the show, man. Like we were three months apart. Uh, in fact, her her birthday's coming up, and um, you know she was the way she was. Shout out Amanda Bynes. You're always welcome Amanda on the That's Fucked Up Hell podcast. Yeah. Come on in here. Check got, us out. Yeah. She got a lot of shit that she could talk about. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I can't speak for her. But no, like, we were best friends. Like We visited each other's houses. She actually came out to see some of my plays. And, um, you know, the way she was on stage was kind of like her personality in person. She's very bubbly, very personable. She gets right to it. She's hella cool, um, which is just a huge, huge, hugely different to who she is now i don't know if you guys seen the videos yeah, yeah. uh and it's not a laughing matter really but she's just a completely different person someone that you don't really recognize when you grew up with them and uh you know definitely i've been that's, trying to get in contact with her because that's the homegirl right so let's talk about on why maybe she is these ways she. because you definitely put us on to some documentary that's dropping tonight i love it what's it called Quiet on set. Quiet on set. Some of the craziest shit I ever heard. I you know none of this shit was going down at Nickelodeon. First time I ever heard of this shit. Dan Schneider, sick ass jokes, crazy kid shit going on. What's some wild shit you saw on set? Yeah, so first you were in off, this documentary, we got to let them know because they told us to make sure we shout them out properly because yeah. they gave shout us, them out. You know they let us see the doc. Um, quiet on set. The Dark Side of Kids TV mm. airing Sunday and Monday. So, you guys, it's already out. Go stream that right <laughs> and now. That shit's HBO crazy. Max. I already watched the first two episodes. And I'm like, how you going to leave me like this? I got to go see Jeez. the other two. Yeah, it's crazy. What streaming platform is it on? It's on HBO Max. HBO produced Max. by Investigation Discovery. Um, and so, and, you know, they're great people behind the scenes. What was your question again? Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you get that The question is, like, some just fucked up... Is Dan Schneider going to prison? 
Because this is crazy. Like, <laughs> is this like an Epstein thing? Like, what's happening? Because as soon as this drops, like, I didn't know about this shit. I didn't know about this guy. So Dan Schneider apparently, right, Dan created Sh- most of the kids shows that we know on Nickelodeon. Okay. He's known, yeah, he's known as like one of the most prolific kids show writers, creators, uh, created uh, iCarly, Victorious. Um, he didn't create all that, but he was there from the beginning and, and was writing from the beginning. Um, like Keenan Kill. I'm he not sure about Keenan right? Kill. I know Amanda yeah. Show. I don't think Keenan Kill. Drake, Drake and Josh. Okay. Drake and Josh. Oh, yeah, Drake absolutely. and Josh. That's the one. That's the one. And then uh, I think I want to say Danger Force and one of the newer ones that got rid of him recently, but he had came back just a couple years ago in like 2016, 2015, did a show. Yeah, you your ass and better go away right now, Dan Snyder. Because <laughs> this shit is crazy. So I will say, as far as him like going to jail, he hasn't been like charged, I don't believe. I don't think he's has any like formal charges or ever been convicted of anything. So we're just gonna put that as out. Everything is alleged with him, right? Brian Peck, who is like a buddy that he brought from sets and uh, so, kept around yeah, as so an acting again, coach, we is convicted. Saw the first it's convicted. Two episodes, which leaves me kind of hanging when it got to all the week. Crazy shit. So it wasn't and Dan's so not, not, yeah, yeah. Dan's kind of just like a sick weirdo in his head that's like, but he's the head of all these fucking jokes. Like, you guys are basically doing cum jokes. You got dicks and balls on your shoulders. Damn, and like, yeah. you know <laughs> what I mean? Wait, hold on. This balls, sounds bro. fucking balls, terrible. Bro. Come on. What <laughs> kind of show is this? So, it was in the thing. Yeah, yeah. You I saw said, it? I said penis and testicles. You know, I got to keep it, you know. This you know. is that <laughs> fucked up, man. You, you got to <laughs> keep it with the real terms, the medical terms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't fucking with no dick and balls. Come on, bro. <laughs> well, you got some penis and testicles <laughs> on your fucking shoulders in some yeah, Spanish. Next. What's the significance of that, bro? With it kids? was feet jokes. It was no, no, like foot face feet jokes. Fetish shit. Not, yeah, not just feet yeah, jokes. Yeah, like yeah, kids like, like praising feet. They're touching, or like you tickle my feet and you like, <laughs> and then like goddamn glory hole and pickles. Dude, so passing pickles through a glory hole. So let me start out. Let me start off though with dance. Like you, you wanted to bring them up. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so I would say around 2020. And, uh, you know, I had by this time, I was, like, completely out of the industry. I never gave a damn. Uh, is I didn't have anything against Nickelodeon, but I did want to kind of be an advocate for child stars and shit that we went through. Because it's kind of fucked up how they left us out here destitute. But, oh, it's du- fucked up. But during that time, though, I was doing my research and just looking at Nickelodeon. And I started seeing uh, Ariana Grande with a foot in her mouth, you know mm. what I'm saying, squeezing potatoes and trying to squeeze the juice out Trying-ish of potatoes. juice out of a potato. Ariana Grande had a foot. In her mouth, her own foot. Oh, her own foot. Okay, her own foot in the mouth. But still, still, it's like all these feet things together. Like it's a bunch of shit. Water on herself and giggling and uh, making words on a fucking. Ben. Who the fuck is writing all these shows? This Dan dude, Snyder. Dan Snyder <laughs> wrote all these shows. Well, he was the, well, he the had lead writers. writer. He was the head writer yeah. of the writers' room, and uh, you know, in the you'll see in the documentary they talk about him having like pornography up on his on his screen during in the writing room, and kind of always asking for massage. Dan Snyder is in the same sense that you think that white people aren't funny. He said that uh, women are not funny, but he had two women writers on the show. And he challenged them to think of a funny uh, female writer, right? Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. He, had, he had one of them like reenact some sodomy, like Bro, <laughs> in she was telling the story about like yeah. how she could connect in, in, in to a high school story, and she was telling about her high school, and he was like, "That would be funny if you did that and acted like you were being sodomized," and then just like didn't let it go. The documentary said, and like the lady had to do it, just like bent over the table in front of everybody in the writing room. And just like talking like she's getting fucked in the ass, which we know that sodomy has been clearly you stated. It's you both. Know, yeah, sodomy it's is both. apparently anal uh, and oral. Anal and oral, but oh. I didn't know anal that. Anal or anal or. I did not or. know that. Oh, I'll be sodomizing in I'm playing. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. wait, cut that exactly. shit out. <laughs> no, only one way, only one way, not the back way. Yeah, but like crazy shit on set. And you said in the thing that like Amanda had been so what? So I didn't we, I didn't get past the second episode obviously because we didn't get it yet because I got to tune in to it. Mm-hmm. But it'll, it'll be dropping on Monday. You guys can already watch. Are it. you uh, saying it. that Amanda was always missing during like school time <laughs> and shit like, <laughs> like that? The way they or how they that chopped out. it or whatever you said. I ain't say, gonna say it was out of context. Yeah. So <laughs> you were looking around for Amanda and she wasn't anywhere to be found. 
You know, and I just the looked at The question is, was Dan able to be found? See, and look, I never really was in Dan's office or kicking it with Dan. And maybe he just didn't think I was that funny and we didn't connect. Or maybe my parents were just like, you don't go kick it with old white dudes and chill. Like, that wasn't really my thing. But, you know, I maybe just thought of Amanda. It just seemed like she was always gone. So, like, the way they put it in the doc, I ain't going to say it was, like, out of context. But it, it, they put that shit in there, right? <laughs> was she hanging out with Dan a lot? I, I, you know, I, or did I, her and Dan have a great relationship? Her and Dan had a great relationship. And so she did hang out with Dan quite a bit. You know, I, I could vividly remember him, her, like, you know, giving him massages. Or he would be, like, you know, hugging her for the back. I'm, I'm saying, you know, like, it's totally relatable. She was like kind of in between his legs, sitting on his lap and shit like that. Like some, maybe an uncle might do it. Like no, your close uncles don't do that. Uncles don't do that. That's why I say maybe. Uncles, 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 uncles don't do that. That's statistically where all this shit happens. Yeah, uncles don't do that. Maybe yeah. You right. I don't. I don't grow up on my. I don't grow up on my niece like that. But you know, you you have seen uncles do shit like that, right? And it's like yeah, the maybe uncle. if it's a family member, it could be permissible. But for a stranger or a, pro, a professional colleague, it's just. Totally unacceptable to me. It'd be unacceptable if, if that was my daughter. I'd be like, "Get your ass over!" <laughs> yeah, yeah like, what's going? get your ass but, over. What's so going? So Amanda's it's family the doc that you could, okay, that you on. couldn't bring. Like parents weren't allowed on the set. That's no, I wouldn't say that. Which it wasn't like because that's how they made it sound on the doc. Like you had to pass your kid off to a fucking basically. Pickle boy and fucking walk you back to set. No, I would I wouldn't say that, but I do. I would say that the parents that were more involved, they did seem to like there might have been repercussions with your child's airtime and like your Damn. relationship. Like a lot of people have said that they're like, you know, if I stood up or I said anything like they didn't wasn't really feeling this kid, the USC like. Brian Hearn, he's in he's in the doc. He basically said he just got cut out the whole show. And I don't want to speak for Angelique Bates, but she has shared some stuff online about, you know, her um about her family situation and how it ended to ended up being her demise on the show as well. And so, you know, with me, I always had a stage sitter. It was just a sweet old lady named Geraldine that was always there. Geraldine, shout, yeah, out, shout Geraldine. out to Geraldine. You know, she was always making sure I was coming back to the room. You know, eat some food, and she was, you know, she was quiet and discreet about it. So she probably was doing the right thing. Um, but in general, like I always just thought it was, you know, Amanda. She was just getting preferential treatment because she was the star, right? And so maybe she didn't have to do school as much as us, or she was just not, you know, hanging out where I would be. And so I'd be like, moment, where the hell was Amanda at? Like, in the moment, it didn't seem weird, right? It didn't seem weird. It just seemed like maybe they called her in for. A, a, you don't think sitting in between a producer is weird? What was going on? If that was my daughter, I would have lost my mind. Yeah, of course. So I take it her family weren't her really there. In the documentary, it says her dad was like. Super tight with Dan Snyder, and that's yeah, how her she dad got was her there. Shit. Her dad was there and was friends with Dan, and literally to the very end, where Dan tried to like steal her and emancipate her, and he she was ended up living at his house for yeah. it. Then I mean, after the, so sometime during the show, she wanted to be emancipated away from her parents, and, Dan and she to help her. went to live with Dan. Yeah, she was like man. about that's 16, 17 look. around that time. Yeah, and this was after our. This was after us being on the show, you know. Dan and that's asked, confirmed that she lived with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I believe that part is in the doc. I believe yeah, that. Yeah, so if it's not, the, please excuse me if I misspoke. She's that's what the documentary, documentary said. said. But the documentary does that's say that, and I believe said. they did. They 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 I don't think they said that exactly, but they said her parents were mad about the situation. She that ran away from home them. and ended up at Dan's house. That's basically yeah. what they say in the doc. And so he comforted her, he brought her in, and was working behind the scenes to get her emancipated so that way they could continue to do, and this sounds bad, do more adult acting. Not not adult, like, as in yeah. P-Star shit, but, um, you know, more grown-up roles. And she had a whole um, career trajectory that she had in her head that she was crafting with Dan. And um, So you know, Dan was acting as if he were her agent or future but agent look, but no but i want to know how when does nickelodeon, she was in nickelodeon she had a skit called penelope taint <laughs> penelope taint yeah and he said in don't the tell docket, nobody what it is yeah don't tell nobody what everybody taint knows is. what a taint is yeah you know what a taint is yeah. you know what a taint is everybody yeah. knows what a taint is so in the documentary it said he got away with it by saying it was short for tainted or some weird shit like that. And Nickelodeon is just like, okay, that sounds fucking normal. 
Penelope oh. Tate every day on Nickelodeon just talking so, like, I'm so Penelope did, Tate. So did Nickelodeon <laughs> at But what's some worse, point, that or Pickle Boy? But go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, what do you need a Pickle Boy? Yeah. And then Nickelodeon admit that maybe they fell asleep at the wheel. So they put out a statement recently saying that, you know, they were unaware of some of the things that were going on. Um, and that they basically wish the best for everyone. And a lot of people think it was Chad GBT. I don't know. You know, y'all got to come up and follow up that statement. But Dan <laughs> Schneider on the other end was like, look, I sent you guys every skit, every costume, all the content. You guys approved it. He said on two coasts because they had an office out here in L.A. and in New York. So uh, apparently Nickelodeon saw everything, approved everything as it was coming out. So, um, you know, whether he was lying to get buy but it's like if you don't know what a tan is and you don't know what a dude holding the uh tray of pickles is and you don't know what a uh you know a fake cum shot looks like it's just like i don't know and but i will say though as a kid i wasn't thinking about that shit you know what i'm saying i, I didn't think you're not thinking like that as a 10 or 11 year old but as if i was writing that as an adult and putting kids through this i would absolutely absolutely be in the frame of my life yeah we got over on there like come on man it's like you in the adult mindset, there's no way you're 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 looking so past. So when did you have, you never out. started noticing no like weirdo shit on set, or you was like walking down the hall and was like, what the fuck, and or like you ain't never seen no, no. shit, or was like, eh, this ain't right, or like no, uh, no. So because what I would say is, you see a lot of like the you, you would see a lot of the staff members like fraternizing with kids and the younger people and they'd be like why is so and so going over his house to go kick it after set and why is they going to the parking lot I was just a little bit too young to partake in any of this stuff right how old are most of the kids I know you were the youngest at 10 how old were most of the kids most of the kids were between like 16 to and they were up to 21 but they were starting at 16 right so like Lori Beth maybe started at 16 by the time I was there she was 21 but they like a lot of them were well, in that age that's yeah. crazy fucking age anyways you know kids no, that's crazy the, that's the moment that's the time shit. yeah right they want to kick it chill probably smoke some yeah. weed drink, give them a little drink kick it and then so you know what I'm saying to those older kids on set they didn't ever say shit about this young girl, or like Keenan and Kill were pretty old on set. They nah, were not, I don't think anybody was. They were challenged. not writing shit, like because all the jokes, all the sick jokes were like written by Snyder, or like who was writing all the sick jokes? Because oh, there was damn, a group, I, wanted, I got a couple of homies that are writers that is cool, there was but a group I don't know what of they were like writing. writers, right? Like <laughs> yeah. it wasn't just Dan Snyder like writing. Nah, these nah, jokes. there's definitely like, a writing team. Some and of them, every I'm, picture I see, like mm -hmm. Kale, like old as fuck. Right. Next to everybody, like. Everybody was older to notice these jokes. What I said. What I noticed in the documentary is how many people were complicit between the behavior of some adults and also the pay wage because they do mention that about uh, two female writers that were paid like if there were the one male writer, wage, which is crazy. Yeah, and they split a they split a salary. How do you how do you split a salary with somebody? <laughs> That's crazy. That, yeah, like, I mean. we gonna pay both of y'all one. Yeah. Uh, I get one. I get a check and she get a check. How are we splitting this? That's what do you crazy. mean? You just cut my shit in half. Um, but no, it is um, you know, as far as what, what both of you guys are saying and. Yeah, would like Keenan or Kel stand up and be like, nah, I don't want to do that. You know, I would see them kind of like maybe want to modify the script because there were versions. So we would get a, a version on Monday. By the time Friday, it would be a little modified. Maybe Keenan and Kel says something. But I've never seen them like challenge any of the writers like at the table reads and be like, this is this is gross. Like nobody ever said this was disgusting or lewd or this is not for kids. I never heard no shit like that. Now they may say, I don't feel like being in tights again. Like, can you put me in something else different? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we a little bit sick of the, the dresses, you know what I'm saying? He didn't play like Miss Piddling and he he was I know I know Kenny was tired of all that shit. What? So, Okay, no, go on. So I would say that a lot of it was, to me, i seen a lot of it was about costumes, and I don't think anybody would stand up and just challenge Dan because they knew the power that he had with the yeah. show. Um, and I will say, though, for two of my seasons, though, he had part ways. They they kind of were sick of his, his behavior on set, and so he was, he was gone for two of my seasons. A lot of the stuff that we see in the documentaries when he came back, 
had his own shows and this was off him trying to create something for Amanda. It didn't work, but they were like, no, nah, come back. We'll give you your own shows. And that's when he had the Drake and Josh, the victorious and the Amanda show, all the crazy shit happened really when he came back. And what a lot of it was not on all that other than a, a hostile work environment is what happened when I was there. It wasn't really the sexual 